Usually, the message with Amy 262 is considered as world's first jet plane. But there was another plane built and designed by a famous physician that was already decades ahead of its time. Meet the Quanta 1910 world's first jet plane. Stay tuned. Welcome back to a new episode of Aviation Life. I'm Nicholas and today we've got a very special topic. It's actually the first jet plane that was ever built in the history of aviation. But let's start at the very beginning. Back in 1910, the world of aviation looked completely different than today. There were no airliners and cargo planes as the beautiful M225 right behind me or a fighter jet or anything you think of. There were biplanes and piston engine planes and that's basically all. Until 1910, when a completely different plane was shown to the publicity for the very first time. At first glance, it didn't look very special, except for one thing, it didn't have any propeller. Instead, it had a long thin fuselage and something that looked like a dustbin on its nose. Before we talk in the details about the very special engine, let's start with the plane itself and how it was built. Basically, it was a biplane with cantilever wings, which means there were no wires required in order to keep the wings straight. When we have a closer look at the tail of the Quanta 1910, we already noticed that this plane is kind of special. It has on the one side a standard horizontal stabilizer, but behind it there's additionally an X-tail or V-tail. The technical data, so the plane had a length of 12.5 meters, a wingspan of 10.3 meters and weighed 420 kilograms. The whole aircraft was built out of wood and metal, but historians and aviators are still today not sure what parts of the aircraft were exactly built out of wood and metal. Finally we come to the steering before we talk about the engine. So basically in the 1910s aircraft weren't really standardized as it's today. So pretty much every aircraft designer did what he wanted. So the ailerons and flaps of the Quanta 1910 were controlled via pedals. And the elevator and rudder were controlled with the hands, both with the right and left hand. I can't imagine how this looked like, but according to photos, it was exactly built this way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, that's how the Quanta 1910's engine worked. Basically, it consisted of a combustion engine and a compressor. The engine and through a gear, the compressor was spun at very high RPM, so it accelerated air backwards to the tail of the aircraft. The true secret of what's first jet engine was fuel combustion in the airflow. That's actually something that historians and aviators don't really know today, because information got lost by the time and Quanta maybe told some lies, we don't know it today, but according to Quanta's explanations from the 1960s, fuel was injected in the airflow at the end of the engine and then combusted which also increased the thrust of the engine which was 2.2 kN which is not bad for the world's very first jet engine that was built over 110 years ago. The first flight of the Quanta 1910 is also something that led to heavy discussions between historians and aviators because none of them actually knew if he flew his aircraft or not. According to Quanta himself and some interviews the first flight took place just as following. During ground tests, Quanta noticed that his engine provided a lot of thrust. He put more throttle in and the aircraft accelerated and took off. The flight wasn't really of a long endurance because already in flight the aircraft caught fire because of the later so-called Quanta effect. Quick hot air coming from the engine was flowing right along the fuselage and so heating it up and in the end burning it. That's a physical phenomenon that's today called Quanta effect. It means that if there is a fluid that's flowing along the object's surface. That's exactly what happened with Quanta's aircraft. The hot air flew along the fuselage and the fuselage burned out. Did Quanta fly his jet plane back in 1910? 
I personally don't know and maybe Quanda is the only one that ever knew. That's because there's actually no proof that he ever flew his aircraft. And some things on his aircraft didn't seem to actually make a lot of sense. Therefore, and because in the 1960s he faked some of his plans for the aircraft, historians doubt that the aircraft actually flew. Anyways, he built an aircraft that seems, at least in my eyes, to look like it's able to fly and it wasn't powered by a propeller but with a completely new type of engine with a kind of jet engine. To be exact, it was a motor jet engine. This was a later developed kind of jet engine that Quanta basically invented. He was the first one to build an engine that works in this principle. A motor jet is built the same way as Quanta's engine so there's a combustion engine with an air compressor and fuel injection at the end of the engine. Air is sucked into the engine, accelerated through the engine and at the end fuel is injected and the whole thing combusted. The mixture that comes out extends itself and is shot out of the engine. This creates a momentum that simply moved the aircraft forward. But it took 30 more years until another aircraft that's powered by a motor jet will take off. It's the Caproni N1 or CC2. It's an Italian jet plane or motor jet plane. The N1 was developed before and in early World War II. Just after building two prototypes discontinued because it was simply too slow to fight against other allied fighters. That's where the story of the motor jet engine actually ends because after the Caproni plane there was no other aircraft that was ever powered by a motor jet except for model planes. When we think of World War II and jet plane, we immediately think of the Messerschmitt Mi-262. The Mi-262 was World's first operational fighter jet, but there was another jet plane that even flew before the Mi-262. It's the Henkel HE-178 and it did its first flight in 1939. That's the plane that we'll cover in next week's episode of Aviation Life. I hope you learned something new in this video and we'll see each other in the next one.